Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 26th, 2014. This first one is from Wired.com. It's entitled, The App I Used to Break Into My Neighbor's Home. I was not even aware of this, but I guess there are two applications. One's called Kimi, and this guy actually, just as a test, um, with his neighbor's permission, was able to copy his neighbor's keys just by taking a picture of it. I guess this application you can put on your uh, smartphone. I don't know if it's available to both smartphones or not, and it's uh, it's happening on the East Coast right now. I guess this is not in the whole United States yet, but this is in the East Coast where you can take a photograph of a key with your smartphone and then have them make a duplicate and have it ready at a little kiosk you can go. and. Uh, there's been some concern about this because as people have posted pictures on Facebook and places like that and even in news stories where they've posted pictures with close-ups of keys now people are kind of concerned that people will start duplicating keys that way and according to this reporter too um, he didn't even follow the exact guidelines of the way you submit the photo it's supposed to be like on a plain background and it's not supposed to be attached to a key ring or anything like that or they won't take it evidently he violated all those policies and was still able to duplicate his neighbor's key and uh, use it to open the lock. Now he did this totally with uh, permission of his neighbor and the Kimi company says themselves that well it uh, will actually get back if you would use the application in the wrong way to get into somebody's apartment or something it would come back on you because we do have your credit card information and stuff like that which is a fairly decent point but uh, I don't know I still think this is going to create a little bit more hassle than it's worth especially uh, I had no idea that the resolution of photographs was enough to be able to duplicate a key, but if you uh, get a chance to read this article about this, I mean, the, the convenience you pay for being able to duplicate the keys kind of uh, puts you in a little bit more danger of your keys easily being copied. I mean, we may have to end up doing like some people are doing with their cell phones or passports where they're putting them in a, a foil-lined case. You may have to actually, instead of carrying your keys on a key ring, in case they're accidentally photographed, you may have to actually start carrying them in an enclosed pouch or something like that. Uh, next up, this is from NASA. This is uh, no, this is this is about NASA, but it's from WPTV.com. NASA shorts short of funds for deep space rocket. Now, actually, to me, this is pretty much saying the opposite when you actually read the contents of the article. The uh, some of you are know uh, know the fact that NASA is. Uh, developing a deep space launch system called Orion. Well, I don't, I don't think they use the name Orion necessarily with it, but they're going to build some of the biggest rockets to be able to get NASA not just back into low Earth orbit, but beyond that and possibly back to the moon and hopefully back to Mars. Well, they're saying of the $12 billion deep space rocket budget, they're going to fall short by about $400 million. Now, if you're talking about in percents compared to any other projects I've ever seen in science, if you're only falling $400 million short of a $12, million, $12 billion budget, that's uh, less than one-half of 1%. One it's not unusual at all, and they even say it in some of the articles I've read, for a science budget to go 50% over budget. So to me, uh, this is pretty decent. Now, they may have to end up sacrificing a few more projects to make up to $400 million, or they may have to delay the initial launch, which is scheduled for, uh, let me see here, December, I think, of, let's see, December of when? I'm guessing, I don't think it's December of this year. It's December of, I think, 2016. Well, anyway, it, te it tells it in the article, but the main the main point of the article, 2017, it's December of 2017, but um, the main thing of the article really is uh, criticizing NASA for the 400 million shortfall, and to me, um, they've done such a good job if they've kept it that tight, I say just give them the extra money. I mean, the benefits we get from NASA and the exploration and stuff like that is going to more than what... Um, outweigh that. I mean, how much do we end up spending every day in the Middle East? I wouldn't be surprised if we spend several hundred million every day in the Middle East keeping our troops over there for a, a losing cause. And pretty much I think everybody's agreed that we're eventually going to leave and it's going to go into civil war or whatever over there. So why not use the funds for a better purpose and, and some better research? Next up, this is from yourwestvalley.com. Amazon worker piloted drone around space noodle. Space Noodle? Needle. <laughs> I can't hardly talk today. An Amazon employee from out of town was the operator of a drone that buzzed the Seattle Space Needle this week, police said. Witnesses told police they saw the craft fly back into a fifth 
floor room at a nearby hotel. And obviously within a short matter of time there were police knocking on the door. I guess some of the reports were that uh, he had crashed it into the Seattle Space Needle, but after reviewing the footage they could see that he simply flew around it. And I guess they made no arrests about it or any, there was not any laws that he actually broke. They just requested and he agreed to not fly the drone around town anymore during the time he was uh, there in Seattle. But uh, yeah, interesting now the FAA says that hobbyists and model aircraft People can fly it for non-commercial use, but any kind of commercial use is uh, not acceptable. Amazon is asking for an exception because, as I've talked about before, Amazon wants to in the future possibly use drones for delivering packages to customers' houses. I still don't see a practical way that they're going to be doing that, but, uh, yeah, they're asking for an exemption to the rules. So things will probably uh, be changing in the future if you do fly drones. This is from the register.co.uk. Bose says Beats are being sued in a patent battle. Bose is actually taking them to court for one, two, three, four, five different patents that they say Bose has uh, stolen from, uh, that Dr. Beats Dre has stolen from Bose as far as their noise canceling uh, part of the, the headphones. I was wondering when suits like that are coming too because I noticed more and more people are uh, releasing noise canceling headphones in a uh, you are in danger because Bose is the first one that came out with it, and they probably own the majority of the patents. You're always in danger of a, a lawsuit from them. I mean, typically, I am not for people suing other people as much as they do. I mean, companies tend to just, anytime they think there's any competition, sue people out of existence. But, yeah, if you uh, out and out copied Bose's uh, patents while they're still enforced, then I guess yeah, you get what you get. I did a story before about the fact of Apple um, is most likely going to do the uh, acquisition of the beats, so I think uh, one of the reasons too that people say that it's, uh, and I agree that one of the reasons why they're probably going to go forth with this is once you reach uh, reach into Apple's deep pockets, you're going to have a little bit more money to come up with in the lawsuits. And uh, my guess is 90% they're going to settle this out of court, and they're just going to pay a license fee. I mean, I think with those beats by Dre and the price, there's a lot of uh, profit margin built into that spread there. And uh, yeah, so what if uh, ten dollars out of each uh, Dr. Beats? Uh, Dre's uh, headphones ends up being going towards Bose to uh, pay for legal licensing of the patents. I, I think I think it'll all come down to that in the end. And last up, this is from NASA, National Aerospace and Space Administration's website. Near miss the solar superstorm of July 2012. I talked about that before, where we had a solar storm that probably would have been as bad as the one we had back in what was it uh, 1859 that knocked out Telegraph. Uh, telegraph uh, communications and uh, even set some fires and stuff like that. Well, I guess after all the studies and things they were talking about, they, uh, that this thing, if it would have hit us head on, would have probably knocked us to the tune of about $2 trillion in damage. And uh, even after, uh, if it would have happened in 2012, even at this time in 2014 and maybe all the way to 2015, we would still be recovering, rebuilding our infrastructure. Probably would have taken out the GPS system, taken out probably the majority, if not all the satellites, brought down the grid system. And like they said, it could even do things like uh, affect so many things that you couldn't even flush your toilet eventually because it relies, uh, the towers rely on electric pumps to fill them up with water. So eventually you wouldn't even be able to flush your toilet. So uh, this is another thing that um, I think by putting the money to it and hardening things, we could actually avoid ourselves. The, the two natural disasters that would give us the worst of the worst would be a meteor impact, which NASA is already working on that before we go to Mars. That's the first plan is actually rendezvous, rendezvous and uh, see if we can modify the trajectory of an asteroid. And the other is actually hardening the different equipment against an EMP. You know, it, it probably would cost a little more. Maybe, maybe each satellite's going to cost 10 or 20 percent more to put more shielding, uh, do some hardening, or some way to be able to overcome um, a blast of uh, the cosmic rays. But it's something we need to do. I mean, coronal mass ejections happen all the time, so they're bound to happen again. The study came up with a, um, a best guess as far as the scenario is that every 10 years, the sun has about a 12% chance of blasting us with a coronal mass ejection powerful enough to really knock out some uh, essential equipment. So, uh, yeah, another reason why I would say, if anything, we need to, it, at the very least, I think we need to double NASA's budget. And not that I'm a fan of Hillary Clinton, but I think it's kind of a done deal that she's going to be getting in as our next president. And I will say the one positive thing, she is a very pro-NASA 
person, so she would probably be a very pro-NASA president and maybe the best chance at actually doubling the NASA budget. So um, if there's one good thing to say about that. Um, so anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, be sure and stop by if you're on Facebook and check out the Dumpster Divers uh, Facebook page and read the articles on there. We've got some really great contributors. They're still contributing to the news stories on Facebook. Um, check it out if you get a chance. And uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week. Oh, I almost forgot. Before I leave you guys, I want to add one extra thing. This was a commenter from last week. Lone Star Writer brought up a good point when I was talking about the uh, technology that was being developed to track traffic jams um, using intercepting the uh, frequencies that a GPS puts out or your cell phone puts out or different things like that in your car to be able to determine traffic flow. Uh, he brought up a very good point. If you're in an area already that has toll tags, you can use the uh, transponder itself not to necessarily deduct toll because if somebody's off, site, off the toll road onto one of the main highways, they obviously wouldn't have to pay a toll, but you can still read the fact that the car is going through. And like in the Chicagoland area, I would say you could probably use this for the top one-third of the northern part of the state of Illinois. So many people have those that if you have enough people with those toll tags, you can just register them and uh, how far they go just by having two different devices along a stretch of road and use them for traffic control that way. So uh, thank you very much, Lone Star Rider, for your one comment about um, last week's report and another technology that's already in place that would probably be practical and at least in certain areas possibly more cheaper than the technology I talked about. So thanks a lot, everybody. Catch you next week.